Uh, welcome to this meeting and our topic as always is smoke, of which there's still too much. Since moving to BC's Sunshine Coast and establishing their Clean Air Society in 1999, David and Rosemary Holmes Smith have engineered some positive changes. Gibson's was the first. They changed the bylaw and banned backyard burning and some, almost a year later, Seashell followed. But we had to sort of push a little bit. The town of Gibsons has even built a drop-off station for yard waste. Residents can drop off debris that is gathered, mulched and chipped instead of burned. The Smith Initiative is one of approximately 500 community-based organizations throughout Washington and British Columbia. Community groups play a large and important role in improving our air quality. The local government is the first line of attack in a way by you know people in the community if they feel there is an issue to do with air quality. Everyone has a role to play. Governments establish guidelines and gather data, like monitoring air quality. Monitoring stations covering both sides of the border are jointly funded by federal, state, provincial and regional governments. BC's Ministry of Environment and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency post air quality indexes. These indexes help residents plan their activities according to local pollution levels. The higher the number, the greater the health risk. BC's Air Quality and Health Index is a communications tool designed to help you understand what air quality conditions in your area mean to your health. The Air Quality and Health Index suggests actions to help you protect yourself and plan your outdoor activities depending on your individual health risk. This lets individual communities on both sides of the border know where their pollution is coming from and in what quantity. Here at the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency, analysts use data from their air monitoring stations to paint a picture of a community's environmental footprint. This information is also available online. In Darrington's case, the particulate matter is probably composed of 95% wood smoke. What I've got on the screen is the levels based on the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA's air quality index. If you're in the green, the air quality is supposed to be pretty good. Uh, once you get into the yellow, it's considered moderate, and the higher you go, you notice it says unhealthy. Governments gather information. Community organizations disperse it and use it to push for change. In Northwest Canada and the United States, old-fashioned wood stoves are a contentious issue. It's particularly acute in northern BC communities, as well as here in Darrington, Washington, a small lumber milling community nestled in the Cascade Mountains. Residents have been burning wood for decades. It's cheap, plentiful, and part of the local culture. Stoves like this were built pre-1992, and that means that they were built without any afterburn or any other device in, in this stove to, uh, to reduce your fine particle emissions and reduce smoke. Um, we're all aware of secondhand smoke in cigarettes. Uh, wood smoke carries some of those same uh, chemicals that cigarettes do. Dan Rankin runs a custom mill and serves as a local councilman. A committed conservationist, he's trying to get his fellow residents to exchange or change out their old stoves for newer propane or pellet burning devices. He even destroys the old stoves that are turned in. It's a co-venture between Darrington City Hall and the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency. The agency administers rebate incentives ranging from $2,500 for propane or electricity to $500 for a newer certified wood stove. Similar incentives are offered in other parts of the state as well. I love to walk and I could literally walk in the evenings and, and see and smell and I was affected by that. I knew it was the right choice for me. I just had to, you know, get up the gumption and get the paperwork taken care of, but I finally did. I am a complete convert, <laughs> no doubt about it. I'm the one out on the streets going, really, you should do this. <laughs> it's noticeable. The attitude and the burning practices that people have had since we've started our program have made our air much cleaner than it was three years ago. A year after it started, the town of Darrington had cut particulate matter by six tons per year. We're making a lot of headway on cleaning up those there on those, those particular days. 
The Ministry of Environment runs similar change-out programs throughout rural British Columbia. In the Skeena region of northern BC, the Ministry of Environment is piloting a similar exchange program in partnership with municipalities, local retailers and manufacturers. Several communities have even passed bylaws that will require the removal of old stoves when the property is sold, or by 2010, whichever comes first. Community-based programs like these are motivators. They get people thinking about what they can do on their own, such as replacing an old wood stove with cleaner burning technology, cycling or walking to their destination, or trading in the gasoline lawnmower with an electric or push model. And car sharing cooperatives on both sides of the border are helping reduce the number of vehicles on our roads. Healthy communities are those where people can shop locally, where there's good public transit, and where there's the proper mix of business and housing. Non-profit advocacy groups, like Smart Growth BC, spread the sustainability message far and wide. Its message impacts the air we breathe. Usually Smart Growth BC gets invited to a community to, to talk about how land development and how land use planning happens. We really encourage development to be well planned and compact so that people have a, have a choice of being able to walk or bike or take transit to where they need to go and don't need to use their car. The message is the same wherever they go. Planning smartly to control growth and minimize traffic creates healthy, livable communities. We can't just leave it up to our elected officials and local government staff to plan the communities without public input. We all need to be engaged in creating a vision and a plan for the community. Information leads to consensus and consensus leads to action. Community-based groups are crucial in the battle against air pollution and improving air quality. <laughs>